until we get adequate testing, we're not going to get a handle on this virus. Everyone who needs a test can get a test. Uh, we should have two million tests a day of strong testing. CVS is launching, and they've been great. Uh, two new drive-through testing sites in Atlanta, Georgia, and Providence, Rhode Island. And each location will be able to test up to 1,000 patients per day using the ultra-fast five-minute test developed by Abbott Labs. Now they're down to five minutes. They call it the ultra-fast. It's very accurate. Abbott Labs, I want to thank them. They've been fantastic. First of all, the numbers have been incredible on testing, but in the days ahead, we're going to go even faster, and we have something from Abbott Labs, which is right here, and that's a five-minute test, highly accurate. Had a substantial addition to testing uh, with the authorization of point-of-care tests, especially the Abbott point-of-care test, which the President has pulled out of the box. Everybody and their brother wants you tested. Everybody on mainstream media wants you tested. The governors, the senators, the congressmen, they all want you tested. The biotech companies want you tested. Heck, Big Pharma and the President of the United States want you tested, and Bill Gates wants you tested. So what do you think the odds are that it's not a real good idea to run out and go get tested? <laughs> Uh, over 40 Senate Democrats have signed a letter saying we need to do much, much better on testing. And you've said this on the show repeatedly, and thank God you have. Repeatedly. Repeatedly. Yeah, thank God you've repeatedly expressed the importance of testing, Mika, because when you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, repeatedly, people will eventually come to believe it. But the lie can be maintained for only such a time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic, or military consequences of that lie. It thus becomes vitally important for the state to use all of its powers to repress dissent because the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie. And thus, by extension, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. So let's just watch as they keep repeating this lie that we need to be tested. Until we get adequate testing, we're not going to get a handle on this virus. Everyone who needs a test can get a test. Uh, we should have two million tests a day of strong testing and contact tracing. Contact tracing. Ah, testing and contact tracing. Now, there's an interesting phrase for you. That's nothing more than a euphemism to exert more control. Anytime you hear the phrase contact tracing, just insert the term constitution trampling. That's more accurate. You take the test and then you trace back all the contacts. This is an army of tracers. They're basically investigators. You know, I agree with you on this. This contact tracing is very important. Try to get a state contact tracing core. We need a national core of healthy people who are properly trained to go out and do this contact tracing. Um, concerted efforts around contact tracing were taking place in Massachusetts, hiring and training a, um, a group, really a, a, a whole cadre of community health workers, um, or contact tracers rather, I can't help but say community health workers. What we would do with this is that we would, this virtual group of contact tracers um, would contact anybody who's tested positive to learn about their recent activities. And it needs to be part of a whole um, whole system. So that includes, you know, ramping up testing. It includes providing uh, really dignified isolation and treatment that, of everyone who's sick. And it's ensuring that people can be quarantined um, and at times separated in a very supportive um, way. We had something like 7,000 people, 9,000 people apply within the first couple of days to be contact tracers. But one of the things that you have to be able to do is to track people who are positive. Where were they? Who were they in contact with? How can you hem up any recurrence of this? Massachusetts has recently announced that they're going to try to build a statewide tracking program, and they've asked, but where are we going to get all these contact tracers? Should we have a contract tracer core, even if we call it something more elegant? Uh, I think the answer is absolutely yes. And, and I, I love the Massachusetts example. We were able to learn 
uh, from them. We're all sharing best practices in real time. Uh, we have tracing capacity that predates COVID-19. It goes back to SARS, measles, TB, uh, et cetera. Tracking and tracing capacity is that exists in the county levels primarily uh, and increasing capacity at the state level. So what we're doing is we're building off that existing infrastructure and using the tools of technology to overlay. Today, Stephanie Desmond talks to Crystal Watson of the Center for Health Security at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. They discuss a tried and true method of slowing the spread of infections using contact tracers and how ramping up to 100,000 of these disease detectives nationwide could allow us to slow the spread of coronavirus. When Singapore confirmed its first coronavirus patient, the Ministry of Health activated its contact tracing team to identify individuals who have had close contact with coronavirus patients. The predicate for getting back to some semblance of normalcy is our ability to identify individuals through testing, to be able to trace their contacts, to isolate individuals uh, that have uh, either uh, been exposed or quarantined people that are tested positive. And that's just gonna require an army of folks and the capacity of consideration from individuals to allow uh, for their privacy uh, to be impacted by that kind of acuity of attention to allow uh, for their privacy uh, to be impacted. And at the moment, in most parts of the world, <clears throat> due to lockdown, most of the transmission that's actually happening in many countries now is happening in the household, at family level. In some senses, transmission has been taken off the streets and pushed back into family units. Now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove them and isolate them in a, in a safe and dignified manner. Put a military czar in charge. Get them to manufacture enough tests. Get the supply lines to supply everything for enough tests. Give the states money to administer the tests and to do contact tracing. The president will invoke the Defense Production Act for meat plants, but not for testing. Mm -hmm. Until you get a handle on testing, this crisis will continue to go on and on. If we don't have enough tests, testing is the key. They are so derelict in testing. Could it co possibly be considered negligent to yes. continue to refuse to use the Defense Production Act to try and streamline testing? Streamline testing. The testing regime is still willy-nilly, scattershot. Our governors, our hospitals, our mayors are searching for enough tests. It is, it, it is the key. Scientists tell us it's the key. What you're making about testing is not a partisan point. In fact, no. the president's own task force makes that point almost every time it speaks publicly. Dr. Fauci in every interview points to the importance of testing. To say everyone will get a test doesn't mean that everyone will get a test. Producing the testing, that's another reason testing is so important. Testing, 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 contact tracing, vaccines. They are the key that will unlock the pathway to normalcy. No science is immune to the infection of politics and the corruption of power. Science that's used to control you under the guise of keeping you safe is a science worth rejecting. COVID is raging. What the hell did you just say? COVID is raging. If you guys are tired of the nonsense and you want to hear more truth, just subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know, and don't forget to subscribe to my private email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. I'll see you guys in the next heavily censored shadow ban video. I want to save lives. <laughs> I want to get over this crisis. <laughs> I want to get us all back to work. That's the key.